Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about acquiring a forensic copy of the Windows Registry. When we talk about computer forensics, the registry plays a massive role because of the amount of evidence it stores. The extraction of this data is critical when conducting a forensic investigation. But because of the registry file format, extracting information is challenging for investigators. The registry files typically store data under unique values called keys. One challenge that investigators face is the lack of knowledge about the registry keys and the data that is stored in each one of these keys. So before we get too far along with actually acquiring our forensic image of the registry, let's go ahead and do a quick overview of what the registry actually consists of. Now to do this, I'm going to use my local machine. I'm running Windows 10. And we're going to begin by just going down here to the search bar, and we're just going to type in Reg Edit. I want to hit Enter. So when you take a view of your system's registry, you're going to be looking at what we call hives or root folders. So this registry, like all Windows registry, will consist of five default root folders or hives. Starting at the top, we have the H key class root. Now this particular hive contains configuration information on the application that was used to open files. Next in our list of hives, we have the current user. This one contains the profile information of the user that is currently logged on to the system. And for our HK local machine, this is configuration information including hardware and software settings. Next we have the HK users and this is the container that holds all the information about all the users profiles that are currently using this machine. And lastly we have the HK current config and this container holds all the hardware profile information for the system at startup. So again these five main root folders are also called the root keys or they are identified as being the hives of the registry. And you can expand each one of these and when you do that you get into the sub keys. So everything that is underneath the root container is known as a sub key. And if we expand one of our sub containers, we can find more sub containers. Finally, when you get down to the last sub container, you'll have the sub container contents. And then over in the right window pane, you will be presented with the data of the sub container contents. And this is the data. And if we click on this, you'll see that you are presented with the data value. It is the subcontainers and the data that is stored in them that gives us the evidence that we are looking for. Let's go ahead and close out the registry editor. Now the next thing we need to know is where on the system this registry information is being stored. To find this, we're just going to go down here. We're going to click on the start button and we're going to go up here to this PC. And once we're up inside of this PC, we're going to open up the C drive. Once we're up inside of the C drive, we're going to go down to Windows. Once we're inside of Windows, we're going to scroll down to our System32 folder. Open up your System32 folder. Scroll on down until you come to the Config folder. And in here is where you will find the location of where those five different hives are being located. And you see we have the System, Software, Security, and the SAM. Now to find the hive for the HK current user, we have to back out to the root and we have to find our users directory and from here we'll find two default directories default and public if we click on default you'll see that we have the ntuser.dat that contains the information for the hk current underscore user hive that we see up inside of the registry when we use regedit so what type of information should we be looking for up inside of the registry when we are conducting a forensic investigation of a computer? Well, that would include users and the time they last used the system, most recently used software, any device mounted to the system, including unique identifiers such as flash drives, hard drives, phones, and tablets. When the system connected to a Pacific wireless access point, 
what and when files were accessed, a list of any searches done on the system, and there is plenty more information available up inside the registry that we can use when we gather evidence of a crime being committed and a computer that we have acquired was used in the commission of that crime. For this lab, we will be creating a forensic image of the system's registry using a free tool called FTK Imager. So this is how I had to get a copy of the FTK Imager. I went out to Google and I typed in, in the search bar, download FTK Imager. I took the first link that was presented. I went out to the download site, clicked on the download link, and that's going to take you over to another page where you have to type in your email address and you have to opt in. But even though I did that, I never did receive the link for the downloads for either the FTK Imager Lite or the full version. So what I did then was contacted the good people at Access Data using this address right here. That got me the link in a couple of days. I just, it wasn't forthcoming right away, but after a day or two, they finally responded. Once I got the links, I downloaded the light version and I installed it onto my USB drive. But the version is so old that the certificate is no longer valid. And Windows 10, Windows Defender, and the access control of Windows 10 will not let you run the program. Let's take a look at that. So I went up, accessed the thumb drive that I have, and here's where I installed the Imager Lite. You just go in here and you try to launch it, and it comes up and just tells you that this app has been blocked for your protection, and there's no way of getting around it that I could find. So I did some research and I found out that that's because the certificate that comes with this version 3.11 is no longer valid. And so it's going to be blocked by your Windows operating system. Not a problem. Close that out. So what I had to do then was download the full version. Now once you download the full version, you're going to install it. And then you're going to copy the contents from your programs folder on over to your USB drive. Let's see how we do that. So the procedure for creating a light version of the FTK Imager is available inside the lab files, but I'm going to take you through it, and it's very simple. So the first thing I did was I removed that folder for the FTK Imager light version from my USB drive. I just deleted it. So that folder is no longer present on my USB drive. Now what I have to do is go up here to my program folder, and I'll open up this PC, and we'll open up the C drive, and I'll open up my program files, and here we see the folder for the access data. Now you have to copy the entire FTK Imager folder on over to your USB drive. So let's just right click on it and we're just going to copy to a folder and I'm going to select my USB drive and I'm just going to say copy. Now I have that registry entry that allows me to either move or copy certain files or folders using my context menu when I right click. You can just right click on it and you can just select copy. And then open up your USB drive, right click inside of the USB drive, and select paste. And so now, when I go over here to my USB drive, let's go back into that real quick. You'll see that I have that folder that I copied over from Access Data. Now when I open this up, you'll see that I have an executable down here. And I have to right click on it, and I have to select Run as Administrator. Give it a second to start up, and there is my FTK Imager. And now that my FTK Imager is running as a standalone program using my USB drive, I can now interact with the target machine without interfering with anything or adding any information to the suspect's computer, which is what we want to do. Now the next thing we're going to do is click on File, and from here, we're going to scroll on down to where it says Obtain Protected Files. 
what you're going to do now is you're going to browse on over to the destination where you want to save these protected files and so we're just going to click on browse I'm going to select my FTK imager save files that's my USB drive and I have created a folder on my USB drive called protected files I would recommend that you save all of these protected files inside of a directory onto your USB drive for ease of maintenance all right so I'm gonna go ahead and just select my protected files directory say OK now I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna select the radio button for password recovery and all registry files and then I'm going to click OK and that's going to begin the export process and those registry files are going to be saved on over to my USB drive Now, once the copy process has completed, we can go ahead and close out our FTK manager. We no longer need it. And we're now going to go up inside of our CSI Linux, and we're going to mount that USB drive and copy on over those protected files so that we can analyze them. Now that we have our forensic image of the systems registry, we need to be able to find a way to import that into the machine that is going to be used to analyze the contents of the registry. In this case, I'm using CSI Linux. You could also use Kali Linux, or you could use any machine that is not going to interfere with the process of writing data to the USB or to any of the hives or any of the information that you have gathered in this process of creating the forensics image. In this case, again, I'm using CSI Linux. Now for me, since I'm using a USB drive and this is a virtual install of CSI Linux, I'm able to look at the USB drives that are currently being accessed via the host machine that I'm running this virtual machine on. So I can go up to Devices, I can go to USB, and you'll see that I have this Toshiba USB flash drive. If I check that, give it a second, I should have a icon added to my desktop showing me that that USB drive is now mounted inside of my CSI Linux and if I click on it you'll see that I have that folder for the protected files and there they are now for those that don't have a thumb drive or they don't have access to the registry hives and they need to complete the lab using this CSI Linux installation well then you can use the link that I have provided inside the lab file and you can download my copy of my registry and you can analyze that when we get to the lab on how we analyze the registry hives to gather evidence. You'll need to copy that download link and place it into the browser inside of your CSI Linux or your CSI Kali and you want to paste that link up inside the address bar just like that that's going to take you out to the download location for that registry hive. Now, when you get out here, you're just going to go over here to the download link. Click on that. Do a direct download. And that's going to save it to your download folder. Go to the download. And you're going to show in folder. Once you see the download inside of the downloads container, just right click on it. And you're going to select extract to. And you're going to extract it to your desktop and you're going to extract it and when you do it'll save it to a folder on your desktop called registry hives once you've completed the extraction process you will find the folder for those registry hives located onto your desktop just open it up and there are the hives and so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about acquiring a forensic image of a Windows operating systems registry. Now in our next lab we're going to be using a utility that comes pre-installed with our CSI Linux that is called Forensics Register Editor or it's called FRED. You can open that up and we're going to be using this to import each one of those hives so that we can examine that hive for critical evidence. So if you have any questions or you've got concerns about any of the information we have covered in this short video presentation on how we go about acquiring 
a forensics image of a Windows Systems registry, don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.